1854, James Hudson Taylor came to China, driving the gospel from the coasts further inland. At the age of 17, Taylor committed himself to becoming a missionary. After four years of medical and physical training, he left his family at 21, embarking on a 156-day voyage before arriving in Shanghai. He rented a local residence that served as a clinic, school, and church. Together with other missionaries, he made 18 evangelizing tours in the Jiangsu and Zhejiang provinces, simultaneously providing medical services and preaching. Unlike many other Westerners of the time, Taylor adopted Chinese clothing, ate Chinese food, and even shaved his forehead, leaving only a pigtail. He had no hesitations whatsoever in approaching locals. This type of behavior brought Taylor a lot of trouble, because at the time these Western missionaries were British. We know that the British were all about gentlemanship, their culture, their clothing, their appearance, they had a system. Dressing like this is gentlemanly, dressing like that isn't. So when Taylor started wearing Chinese clothes, especially after he shaved his head and styled his hair in a pigtail, the foreigners could not stand it. They would say, why would a normal person choose to style their hair in a pigtail? We can't stand it. So when Taylor started dating Maria, he ran into some great difficulties. Maria's guardian at the time, Aldersey, who was a really great missionary in her own right, was completely against it. So we see Aldersey is clearly a missionary who deeply loved China. She founded a school. She especially focused on education for girls. In China, she had a huge contribution, but she was against Maria and Hudson Taylor being together. She felt Taylor was forgetting his roots. He was forgetting our British dignity, our British pride, these British things. Later, Taylor would establish provisions that all missionaries that were part of the China Inland Mission would have to wear Chinese clothes and style their hair in pigtails. For this reason, some people left the China Inland Mission. Taylor said, it is not their denationalization, but their Christianization that we seek. We wish to see Christian Chinese, true Christians, but with all true Chinese in every sense of the word. This was the time of both the Taiping Rebellion and the Dagger Society, a difficult time of chaotic war and spreading epidemics. In 1858, Taylor lost his first child and his sister-in-law. The wife of his colleague, Parker, also died of illness. From Morrison to Taylor, out of the 200-some missionaries who came to China, 40 missionaries and 51 wives died of illness. For a missionary entering inland China at the time, the average life expectancy was only seven years. In 1860, Taylor's church in Ningbo had 21 people, but he fell ill, was extremely weak, and had to return to England for treatment. And let's face it, I mean, Hudson Taylor had some pretty difficult times. I mean, he had basically, as I understand it, what we would probably call a nervous breakdown at one stage. On several occasions, his health was very poor. He lost his wife. And then, of course, there was the terrible shock of, you know, workers he called out on the field dying in disease or different circumstances. So he knew suffering at a very deep level, but through it all he also knew the Lord was with him. So I think his faith was very deep, very real. In England, he would often pull out a Chinese map to pray for places where he had served 
and also pray for the 11 inland provinces where the gospel had not yet reached. One day in 1865, Taylor was at a large gathering of a thousand people in Brighton. Before his eyes, he saw one joyful British smile after another, while in his heart he was reflecting on one hungering Chinese face after another. He prayed silently for God to send 24 willing, skillful laborers to inland China, two for each of the 11 provinces plus Mongolia. The next day, Taylor opened a bank account for the China Inland Mission in London and deposited 10 pounds. He said, this is not simply 10 pounds, but 10 pounds and all the promises of God. In September 1866, Taylor, along with 16 other missionaries in the China Inland Mission, arrived in China. They established their headquarters in Hangzhou at one new lane. The following year, Taylor appointed a Chinese pastor, Wang Laijun, to take charge of the church in Hangzhou. Taylor himself led a group of missionaries that set out for the 11 inland provinces. For the next 20 years, 137 missionaries came to China through the China Inland Mission, establishing 45 churches, 141 mission stations, and baptizing 1,764 people. In 1905, Taylor passed away in Changsha. He entered China at the age of 21 and served in China for 56 years. Alongside him, his wife and four children lay sleeping in their beloved land. His descendants, generation after generation, through a long chain of life, continue to fulfill one of his promises. If I had a thousand pounds, China should have it. If I had a thousand lives, China should have them. No, not China, but Christ. Can we do too much for him? Can we do enough for such a precious Savior? Taylor's autobiography was published by the Beijing People's Daily Press entitled, To China with Love. This is a wonderful title. What is love? Loving life, loving every single person.